Brian, it's been about one month since Hurricane Ida made landfall and basically created some some port issues at the Gulf Coast ports. Now that we're one month out, most terminals are back up and running. But how is the situation down there when it comes to transportation? Yeah, it's it's improving. It's certainly not uh, fully operational. Uh, I think all but one facility, uh, which is uh, Cargill and Reserve, which is going to be down a substantially longer period of time, uh, is back up and running in one form or another right now. We, we've seen some of the last ports that have uh, recently come up this week. Uh, some of them are still kind of limping along, so I don't want to say that all of the other facilities are running at 100% yet, but there are some really positive signs that um, we're getting back to about maybe 80 to 85% of capacity down there uh, with Cargill Reserve still being offline. But um, it's it's improving, but you know this is harvest, and this is a time when we have a lot of, of demand uh, to, to, to get out the door, so to speak. And so it's, it's still certainly causing some, some, uh, some pinch points and barge logistics and things like that. So we, we still have a hole to dig out of, but it is improving. You stole my next question because I was going to ask about where we are with capacity and you answered that a little bit of, of how long it may take to get to a normal flow. And that's the worry about soybean shipments right now, since we're at that, that crucial time of year. So do you think this will still potentially be a problem with, with U.S. shipments of soybeans? Um, or do you think maybe with how things are going right now, that may not be as much of a worry as it was a month ago? I, I would say we're we're at just as much of a worry. I don't know that that's really abated much. I, I think what we're seeing right now play out is is the timing of barges and empty barges coming empty barges coming north is is still limited. I mean, we're we're still not at that full capacity of of, of unloaded barge availability to to go and accommodate that harvest. So we're seeing very expensive barge freight, which is which is creating a lot of pressure on basis in particular. Uh, along the Illinois River system, the Mississippi River system, and the Ohio River system, that, that barge freight cost is universal, regardless of what commodity you put on that vessel. And that's that's still an, a Hurricane Ida effect. We, we still have to get all those barges cycling through the Gulf, coming up empty to accommodate the, the demand that we have. So I still think we have a few weeks of, of that Hurricane Ida disruption that's going to linger in the barge freight market. Um, that is still affecting basis through this heart of, of bean harvest and, and corn harvest in some locations. Um, so I still think that has a couple weeks to go before we can really see some some pressure taken off of that market. Um, we've seen, you know, St. Louis, for example, is has traded 900 percent of tariff, which is almost an unheard of number this week. Uh, you know, a, a, a cost per bushel from St. Louis to to uh, New Orleans is usually in the. 30, 35 cent range, 40 cent range for a harvest time frame, and it's it's 80, 90 cents. So it, it is taking its toll on basis right now, which is which is uh, still probably got a few weeks to go. How does this compare to Katrina now that we're a month out or not compare to Katrina? I, I think I think the effects to the port facilities in New Orleans, the effects of Ida were worse than Katrina. I think Katrina from a broader perspective was was significantly worse for New Orleans. But from uh, a Gulf operations perspective, this has lingered on longer than Katrina had. I mean, Katrina had some of the similar effects, but I, I felt like when Katrina happened, we were we were a little further along with Gulf operations than we are today. There was just more damage at the Gulf. Are we still shuffling around sending commodities to different to different ports or sending it uh, potentially to the West Coast, for example? Are we still doing that to pick up the slack for for some of the terminals or the, the terminal that's that's still closed on the Gulf Coast port? And how is that going? Yeah, I, I would say we're going to be maxing that out. Um, you know, we have to get bean harvest far enough along to get the vessels on the East Coast or at the lake, uh, uh, at the Great Lakes or off of the PNW to start loading. But I think we're, we're very near the time frame where we're going to be at max capacity at all those non-Gulf ports out of the U.S. really soon. Um, so the ability to switch more there is probably limited because I think for the month of October, most of those facilities are going to be at max capacity anyway. What about transportation costs and energy costs? How does this play 
a role right now at this time of year and trans and with transporting? I mean, I, I think our our transportation systems, not just in the United States, but globally, we've we're seeing some things we haven't seen for over a decade, maybe 12 years with these energy prices that we're seeing. Um, it's 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 a story that's becoming front and center in, in the transportation world. I don't care whether it's trucks, barges, rail lines or vessels. The amount of money, the energy side of that is taking up is is a larger share of that overall shipping cost that it's been probably since 2008. So to, uh, which is well more than 10 or uh, that's closer to, uh, you know, 20 years almost, or, uh, you know, 12, 13 years. So the, um, you know, a good example, you know, we, we were just talking with a, with a client today that was talking about shipping corn into Central America. And last May, when uh, fall corn was in the 620 range, which was near the high of the contract, uh, chartering a vessel to go into Central America was around 35 to 38 bucks a ton. Well, today that same charters in the mid 60s per ton. So the folks in Central America are paying the same price for corn today as they were this past spring, even though the boards dropped a uh, dollar a bushel or a dollar twenty a bushel off of its highs for December futures, and and most of that for the world buyers being consumed in energy costs. The uh, you know, whether it's a container, whether it's a it's a it's a shuttle train to get to a destination or these barge markets that are that are utilizing, you know, bunker oil and heating oil for fuel. We are at multi year highs and that filters into the transportation costs, which ultimately puts pressure on basis at the origin. So we, we are fighting this fuel cost for sure. And, and just simply transportation availability, um, high demand, high fuel costs is, is really um, taking a bite out of that ultimate price a producer receives um, for his crops. And I imagine that could slow down transportation too. For sure. Um, you know, it, it could definitely slow it down. I think a lot of the slowdown is also labor shortage related as well when you get into the truck market. But as it relates to barges and rail lines and, and, and vessels, it's, it's, it's a sticker shock from the end user for the cost of transportation. He's having to to um, calculate into his ultimate cost of goods that he hasn't had to calculate in over 10 years. It's, it's a high number. Is there anything I missed you want to touch base on when it comes to one month post Ida? No, I, I would say, you know, we're in as good a position as I, as I think we felt we would be in, uh, you know, two days, three days after Ida, when really there was a lot of uncertainty about how bad the Gulf was going to be. There was a lot of time frames at that point throwing out, it was going to take a month for the Gulf to get back to normal. And then there was some time frames even longer than that, that we were really fearing, which that did not come true. We're, we're back to, uh, we're going to be back to near normal minus one particular facility uh, pretty much right now or into next week. And that's, that's about as good as we were hoping for a week after Ida. So that's, that's kind of an as expected part there. All right. Thanks for your time, Ryan. And for those of you watching, my name is Betsy Jibben and I am reporting with Ag Market Consulting for agmarket.net.